Welcome to working with quick concept art with Photoshop starting from a traditional drawing. So let me just take you back to the original drawing which was essentially just quickly drawn with a marker and then it was just scanned in actually using Adobe Scan to get it nice and rich and colourful but nonetheless it was just scanned in and what we want to do is just colour it up in Photoshop. So let me just take you through that process. So essentially here are the files here, basically just the line art and after it's been coloured up. Now I've got a couple of other little files here, I just want to show you how they can come in handy as well. So if I just open up my Photoshop file, let's just have a look and see how this was put together. So I'll just bring this into view and we can just see what's here. Now I've got my layers and it's got quite a few layers and if I just turn these off, we can see that all just the colours, so I'll turn them back on again. So just the colours put in there, just building up from the base art upwards, essentially. Now I've also got in my pars here a whole lot of little pars that might be a little bit difficult to see at this stage, but these are just path shapes which are these specific tones or colours or shapes that I'm working with. Now you don't have to work with this, but when you want to refine your art, this can come in a lot handier. So we're sort of going to work this method. So anyway, let's just go back and we're going to work within that. Now it doesn't matter if you're like me, I'm working with just a cyan, magenta, yellow and black, a composite of the lot, or working essentially with RGB, but I'd say for the general best way of working is just keep an RGB if you want to use any filters and things like that later on. So let's go through and build this. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to close this one for now and I'm going to take this file here and I'm just going to drag it onto Photoshop or of course I can just go right click or control click if you're on a Mac like I am and I'm just going to look for Photoshop to open it up. Now essentially what I've done with this file, in fact if I go to my paths you can see I've still got all the paths in there and now it's uh, clearer to view. Now even though I've, I've exported this as a JPEG, I've still exported it with the paths which come in really handy as an illustration technique. So I'm just going to use this uh, uh, quickly but I'll add just a quick example of how this works as we go through the process. So a good way to work with the art, really loose drawing, it's simply scanned in. So let's just go back to our layers here. Now the first thing I want to do is unlock the layer. You can also double click on that to make it a layer but this is just going to be called line. So with this, I'm just going to call it line and we've got our art ready to go. Now, what we're going to do is I'm just going to create another layer. It's gone above here, but I'm just going to use this as just the base color. So I'll just call it, well actually I just might call that base color so we can see what's in here. I'm using American spelling, if I get that right and just return key and we're good to go. Okay, so I want to put a color in there and if I just bring this up a little bit, just command zero just to get a little bit more full size in the page, I've still got the selection here. So if I want to get rid of any selections, I just click down on the gray there and you see it's gone. So anything that you're selecting, there it is being picked up. If you don't want it, just select down here. But just to get this whole thing going, I wanted to show you this quick technique you can go through and set up a path from square one, or you can just go really loose and just get some general things put together. And I'm just going to do this. I can use the polygon lasso tool, be it a rigid tool or a loose tool, seeing it's mountain range, I might go quite tight. So I'm just going to do some crazy shapes in here just to show you how this works. In fact, I might just join it up like this, just to show you, and then kaboom, it's joined up. So I've got a selection. So with that selection, I can actually just fill it with any one of the foreground colors. So whatever color system you want to work with. Now, just as an added benefit to this as well, I'm just going to show you just a file. I just grab this file and I'm just going to open it up and um, just bring it into view like this. It's just a stock image. So I certainly don't want to use that um, and I'm not allowed to use it, but I do want to use it for the colors. And if I, we have a look here, here's this file just with a bitmap, or not bitmap, but pixel images. So just to get the, the colors, the main colors you want to work with, what you can do is just keep it as a separate file. If I just drag that original file into Photoshop, or I can 
control click and just open with Photoshop and then I've got this image and just to get these colors what you can do is just under filter here you can come down and basically as you're going into these effects etc you can just go to where it says pixelate and I just want a mosaic and with the mosaic I can slide it anywhere I want just to get my core colors so I'm going to go okay I'm not going to even bother about saving this one but I can actually just use this to select my images and a way to get these two files appearing so if I just come back into my new image here which is the mountain line one which is this just there I'm just going to go through and uh, basically just get those two images appearing so you can do that by going up to window in fact we can get all three palettes open if we want and just on the range here you can have one two or three so we can have them up and down so above or we can go through here and we can also go on the side depending on how you want to do that and then of course we can just move either one just, be able to just grab it in there oops and I certainly didn't want to do that but uh, and I'll go back just to point at all there so I have the return key that just gets out of it and we should be able to see there just drag it across and I might just bring that image back in a little bit to get just the taster of it. So just on this image here, remember we had our pixels selected. So what I'm going to do with this one is I actually, rather than just color it up, I want to turn it into a path. So I can just drop any color. In fact, I'm just going to go and sample to say one of these colors. There's the color. And to fill it, use Option Delete for the foreground color, which is the full delete key, or Command Delete to get the background color. I'm going to go Option Delete and hold it. Where is it? We can see it down here, but it's not here. Well, what we have to do with this line file at the top here is we just want to make sure we've got a blending mode of multiply. It's just going to make it darker. The black will just be darker and anything white will just go straight through. So anyway, I've got my shape up here, whether I want to use this one or not. I just want to demonstrate this a purpose to get it going. And basically then I can go into the pass and just with that selected there, I can go oh, just out of view there. I'll bring it back in so we can see what's going on there. I'll click on that and I'll just go make work path. Not new path, that's when we're doing a brand new path and going to use the rulers or the, not the rulers, but the path tool to do it. I'll show that in a minute. I just want work path. Tolerance is two is great, and I'll go OK, and here it is down the bottom, and I can just double click, and I'll call it, I'll call it side, just so I know what's going on here, and just return that, and it's in there. So whenever I want to action this now, the pass there, if I click outside the path or ever bring it up again, I can just click it on like so, and I've got my path. And if I ever want a selection, then I can come to this path and just make selection. And I can even make it soft. So maybe I want to make it soft. So really good technique, very similar to airbrushing of the past. So I'm just going to go 20 pixels to make it all very feathered. So I'll do that once more, just 20. So it's uh, just a, not too big, but just enough. And that should be quite soft. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go and choose another color. Let's sample another color from here. And I'm going to go to my airbrush tool this time, just so we see what's going on. So we can use any paintbrushes we want. So essentially, I'm not going over all the paintbrushes with this, just showing the technique. And I'm just going to use my bracket keys. So we can actually make it bigger when we're in the brush by um, actually choosing the size. In fact, any other brushes there as well. Or by the way, we can also go and get the airbrush size here and play around with it depending on the brush size and what we're doing so just down here we can change the size and we've got all these other tips so let's see um, see how soft or hard it is that'll be fine so i'll click back here and see what's happening so i've got a soft edge that's going on the outside okay now it's only happening on this layer here as well which is the space layer that i've got so Great to use the uh, gradient tool as well. So I just want to do the same thing and just drag a gradient in there. 
and it's bringing it in. So I'll go from that side. And you see it comes in from the side. So you've got all these tools to go really quite crazy with. Well, for this one, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to deselect it. Now to deselect it, you just go to select and we don't want it selected. So we go Command D or deselect. And with this one, I'm going to select it all and to select it all, I can go Command A. So just all and everything's selected. And what I want to do is just go delete. So I want to delete that. In fact, I've still got the blue that was appearing actually went to the wrong um, layer there. So that was a bit careless of me when I painted in there. But nonetheless, you can see sort of the effect of how it's going. So to get out of that, all I need to do is go up to my history there. And I'm just going to go back until all of this is gone. In fact, I might go right to the top here and just to where I've made that layer, etc. So I just wanted my art here, which is the line. So maybe name change, here's the line back. Great tools to go backwards and forwards. And now we can go quickly through and just use the sections that we want. So with that, I'm just going to click on my base art here, which let's see, which is the, the biggest area. I just want to do this mountain base, click on this one, I'm going to just choose the mountain base color. So just make sure I'm down here on my sample. So this is the mountain base color that I'm going to work with. Or maybe I'll just get a little bit greener, lighter. I think that's a nice neutral one. Just back on this file here. And we've got that selected. So I just make that selection. I just want it to be hard as well. So not 20, I just want it to be zero at this stage. And then I'm just going to go OK, and I'm just going to go Option Delete, making sure, of course, I do put in my layer here, put it down the bottom, and now go Option Delete. Easy to make that mistake. And of course, at the top here, we just need to change this to Multiply. So here we are with the base of putting it together. So I'm just going to do one more in this process. So let's go back to our pars. And I'm just going to do a bit of a highlight with the same mountain light up here. We've got, or actually it's more the shading, but let's put a different color in there anyway, just so we can show the point. Okay, so with this example, I've got this one selected. Uh, let's see, mountain highlights, and I'm just going to make this path a selection. Make selection, just zero, that's fine. I've got that selected, and I'm just going to go to a just a darker tone just to, to get things picking up nicely. So it's quite dark at the moment. Actually make sure, again, we're just using our eyedropper tool. Now you can use the eye tool to access that. Maybe just a bit dark. That's probably somewhere between the two. Let's see how that's going to go. Great. Okay, so back to this tool. Click in here. Now I can use my paintbrush or whatever, I'm just going to fill it with the color. I'm in a speedy rush to get this done. So with that selected, there's my base color and I'll go Option, Delete. Now before I do that, what did I do wrong? I'm going to come to the layers. We want to build up a layer so we don't make any mistakes. So I'll just call this one Base. But you can see how quick and easy this is to work with. And what I'm going to do is now just create another layer just above this. And I'm just going to call it I'll call it um, Shade, just so we've got something in here. And just click on that, and Option Delete will fill it with that color. And then I can just go Command Delete, just to deselect it. So we'll just go through and we build everything up. Now, before we actually go too far, if we want to refine it even more, we've been very loose on putting all those marks together. Remember, we did it with just this Polygon tool. Let me just go back to the path tool and I'm just going to select maybe one other path down here in the water just to show you what's going on here. I can select any path and this is why it's great to work with paths. I'm just going to go down and just with this water effect here. All very sharp lines and I can actually put this in and before I do I want to soften a few things up. So what do I do here? I can actually come down and I go to my pointer because these are vector shapes. And this is going to select the whole with the black tool. So if I click on that, I can move everything. Just Command Z undo. Don't want to do that. I want to work with just a couple of little points here, just to get a bit more roundness in it. 
So what I can do is I can say highlight anything. I'm just going to highlight that point here, click on it, and there's a handle that means I can go and refine it. In fact, anything that even doesn't have a handle, see I can curve it as much as I want, and that one, oh, that's got a handle as well. But some of them are really sharp points. So if I don't want a sharp point, I can also go back the other way. I'm just going to undo that a little bit. because so I want to just take a point here. And with a point that's anything like that, if it's, if it's not a curve, let me zoom it back in a little bit, just to show you what's going on here. So I'm just going to go down here and just zoom this right up. And so I get a point. So what I want to do, of course, vector shapes, of course, just fantastic. I'm going to go through here, and I just need to find my pen tool. Okay, so you need to look for your pen tool because it's got a few hidden tools underneath of it. Okay, and here it is just here, and it's the convert tool. I can click on any point here and make it a curve. Or if I click back on it, it goes back to sharp points. So click and drag, or click back, and it gives you infinite control. But anyway, um, whether I want to do that or I just want to go back to my pointer tool here, direct pointer tool, suddenly I can move these precisely back into alignment. So working with these guides gives you incredible flexibility. And of course, once we make a selection, it can be softer or harder, but nonetheless, you're going to get a great effect with it. So let's just go back to that finished file again. Here we are, good to go, and we can refine this as much as we want. I'll just deselect that now, we're back to normal, and that's how you quickly put artwork together, whether you're going to do just a quick visual like I've got here, or a very complex finished one. The path tools are fantastic. Thanks for watching.